um, by interviewing people like we said, uh, Tupac. Uh, you gave him his first uh, television interview. Um, that has to be huge, man. It's just past 25-year anniversary of that interview. Uh, can you reflect a little bit on that for us? Well, first of all, I I knew he was brilliant. He was very young, um, but he was brilliant. And, and you could tell by his demeanor, by not only his answers, but just his his thoughtfulness about life and his conviction about what he believed in. You know, it, it's like, and he said, you know, if you're going to stand for something, stand for something. You know what I mean? you got to believe in what you stand for and what you're talking about. And he absolutely did. It was, I don't really think there's been anyone else quite like him, honestly, in the world of hip-hop. He, for, as far as I'm concerned, he... He didn't really start it, but he certainly brought it in a kind of way that we haven't seen since then. Um, and it came from, I have to say, it came from his mother, Afeni. I don't know if you're probably aware of the story, but, you know, she was in, in jail, in prison, when she was carrying him. And she was in prison because she was a part of the Black Panther movement. And she was in prison for 200 counts of conspiracy. She acted as her own attorney attorney, and beat the rap herself. So this was a brilliant woman, too. So clearly he got it honestly. And I was just yeah. always impressed by her and could understand why he was the way he was. He was, he was born... You know, uh, he was born into it, and he had people with great knowledge telling him the truth, like he mm -hmm. said, not pulling any punches. And I believe that that came out in his music. What was he like? Uh, you know, what I'm saying when you met him in person, you know, was, was he uh, was he laid back? Was he amped up? How was he as uh, the interview went on? And just well, he was. You know, he was nervous. It was the very first interview he had really done, so he was kind of nervous. This was right after he had done uh, the movie with um, – actually, the movie wasn't quite out yet. It was the one with Sam Jackson, Juice, with Omar Epps yeah. and Sam Jackson. And it was about to come out, I believe, at that time. And so he was – you know, there was a lot going on. He had uh, a hit – and so everything was happening all at once. And so he was he was rather amped up, but he was always, um, how can I say, he was laid back in the sense that he always appeared to be calm, at least at that particular time in those days. So he, he was very focused. I think that's a better way to put it. He was very focused on what he wanted to do, what he had to do. Now that all changed a little bit later on. And I saw him often, and I, at one point, about two years later, I'd gotten to the point where I was so upset with him that I wanted to just wring his little neck one night. You know, I saw him at a party, and I'm like, okay, sit down here. I'm going to talk to you like your mother would talk to you. You know, it was like one of those, because I told him, I said, you're starting to believe your press. Don't do that. You're better than this. But he really had started believing that, well, you know, it was a lot going on back in those days. And it was so serious. And I think people didn't realize how serious that East-West gangster thing was. And people were, you know, d d posturing and and trying to be this and trying to be all that and trying to be gangster this and trying to be gangster that. And I'm like, you know what? Dad is dead. Somebody shoots you and you're dead. You're dead, as we now know. You're not coming back from that. And right after he had that run-in with um, one of the Hughes brothers and ended up, you know, going to jail for that, I'm like, really, Tupac? Really? And that's when I got really upset with him. Um, we were at a party, in fact, that Clive Davis had given for Whitney Houston. And he was there, and he had spent some time in jail for for beating up Alan Hughes, the director, okay? I'm like, why are yeah. you beating up Alan Hughes? That's not necessary. Yeah. 
So I was really upset about that and just really, I just felt like, you know, and I knew he was listening to me, but it was kind of like, it was kind of like going in one ear and out the other, and I knew that. And that's when I started really getting worried about him and just not having a good feeling about it. And then two years later, he was gone. Yeah, yeah, so tragic. Uh, but you saw you, you saw uh, the digression, so to speak, or him, you know, leading into that path. Do you think he knew he, his time was running out? I mean, it's in his music. Uh, he did so much stuff towards the end. Do you think he had an idea that his time was, was coming to an end? Oh, I absolutely do. I mean, he sang about it. You know, he talked about it. He rapped about it. It's, it, it's in his music. And I think at that particular time, with what was going on anyway in the rap world, I think a lot of people felt that way. I mean, these days, honestly, I look at Snoop and, I, you know, I, I sometimes have to look at Snoop and I laugh because I've, and I've even said to him, like, I know you're happy you're still here because there was a time when I'm so so sure he thought he would not have been here today. You know what I mean? Because he was all part of that, too. I mean, there were a lot of people that were a part of that. And those, the, the ones that are, have survived are lucky, but they're, look at all the people who didn't survive. And, you know, we know of Tupac and we know of Biggie, but then there were a lot of other people that people don't tend to know about or think about that just didn't quite make it through that era. Yeah. 